Hi, I'm Tim and this is part five of the course on building products with JavaScript. Uh, this is going to be a part on finishing the backend development, at least uh, the basic stage. And uh, if you watched all my live streams that I did uh, for the backend development, I guess you won't really find anything new here because this is going to be an overview for those who don't want to watch the whole coding process. Uh, again, if you want to see details of what I'm going to talk about now, you can just go ahead and watch the live streams that are published in this channel as well. I will put the links in the description of the video and you will find all the code process and, you know, development and see all my issues that I had and errors that I did and all that kind of stuff. But let's talk about what I did in the past, uh, I think it was two weeks. So first of all, I've added the authentication using Passport.js. So as you can see here, we uh, utilized Passport.js, uh, which is a nice tool for setting up authentication in uh, Express.js. And I've set up two strategies. I've used the local strategy, which basically allows us to just log in and you know set cookies and things like this. It's your basic authentication strategy that you generally use with uh, any web app. And I also set up the JSON Web Token strategy, which um, I sort of think we need because we're going to develop mobile and desktop clients. And you know, fiddling with cookies on uh, while writing those is always a bit of a pain. So it's way easier to actually handle the authentication using JSON Web Tokens. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's any special here really. So basically we have a login method that just uh, checks, you know, if the passport authenticated using local strategy and we have the uh, re register method that just puts a user into database. That's it. We do hash passwords. So um, if you are interested in this sort of like hashing and security, I mean, this is nothing uh, crazy here. So we just use the crypto uh, SHA 256 with uh, some configured authentication salt and that's basically it so there's no like super security you know this is not um, sort of high-end secure system without like we don't even use like helmages and other stuff that you would use normally to secure the express app but it's sort of very basic but it works so you know we save the user with login and password and then we find it during our authentication with passport um, as you can see here in case of json web token we actually look uh, for the user and um, um, the payload of json web token is actually the user without uh, critical information like passwords for example all right so this is thing one that I did. Uh, other thing is obviously I've set up the database. So I already showed you that we saved the user and um, searched for him. So I've used the Thinky as the uh, provide the, like the um, API for database because uh, I mean, there is a pretty good everything to be official driver, but I took Thinky because it does allows you to have a bit of a validation. So you can actually define schemas here. I think user may be a bit easier to understand. So basically, you know, you can say, okay, think you create model user and this model is uh, an object that has a login password and registration date and login and password are strings that are required. And then registration date is a date which defaults to uh, R now, which will basically be set once you write to the database so that, you know, you don't have to care about that. It's a, uh, again, you know, I didn't do any fancy stuff in here. So it's like relatively simplistic uh, schemas, both for <clears throat> users and for questions as well. Uh, so for questions, we just have like text, creation date, expression date, uh, because we want to sort of limit the time when users can answer. Then we have an array of answers, which is just basically user and then text answer. And then we have an owner of the question, which is again, just a user and uh, answers defaults to an empty array so that, you know, I don't have to need it myself. So Thinky is sort of nice for abstracting things like this. Um, in addition to that, I wrote a bunch of tests. So if we go ahead here to the terminal and execute NPM test, you will see that uh, we have something like 92 tests that actually executed in 2.5 seconds, uh, which is quite nice if you ask me. So all of them are related to testing the API methods that I've created with like authentication, user management and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see here, um, maybe I should actually conform this to one schema because somewhere I have those sort of prefixes with URIs and here in the authentication, I don't actually have them. So it might be a good idea to a bit adjust this. But basically uh, those tests cover most of the things. So I think once we set up the test coverage, we'll actually see if I missed any of the branches, but 
Uh, basically, what I did during the live streams is I took um, the, for example, update, and then I went through each of those if closures and try closures and try to test all of those branching, you know, what will happen if the ID is wrong? Will it like actually throw? What will happen if user is non-existent? Will it actually uh, check this, you know, and so on. Uh, once again, if you're interested in the detailed process, have a look at the live streams because all that stuff is there. Right, so this is the database setup and we, we used, um, so basically the thing is since we need to test how the database works because we are actually like saving and you know loading from it uh, and spinning up the actual database is a bit of a pain in ass. So I used a um, package called Reculite, which is a rewrite of everything to be in pure JavaScript so that in our uh, tests, we actually uh, create Reculite server programmatically here. And as you can see here, it's silent, basically won't log anything. And then once the server is created, we actually start tests using this server. So uh, there's a bunch of um, actually um, errors here uh, from ESLint, but those are mostly uh, dev dependencies. I mean, I guess it should be uh, better to actually add those um, sort of uh, ignore them in uh, ESLint RC, so that's another point I should do. But basically, this is only like the bootstrap file, which actually loads the Babel core and set up the Reculite, but the actual tests are uh, here. This is our old test. Like, for example, if you take the user tests, uh, you will see that it actually does the proper request there with a uh, token. So this is JSON web token, and it expects the body to actually work and you know to write the content to load the content and all that kind of stuff okay and finally what i did is i used uh, quite heavily the async await uh, syntax so if you're not familiar this is basically the way to uh, write asynchronous code in synchronous way so you can await any promise and get the value just to normal variable uh, but because this is promises you actually have to uh, need a way to deal with errors. So one way is use try catch. So in this case, for example, I'm using try catch explicitly because I want to check if user doesn't exist. But in other cases like, uh, so in case saving, uh, this actually is not needed anymore. So we can kill that. It can be just a wait safe. So the thing is I wrote this async request uh, helper, which is here in the till. And the idea of async request helper is really simple. So basically you give it the handler and it returns a new function which executes the handler uh, in sort of Express.js format, but it appends .catch to it. So basically whatever the async function or promise throws, it will catch the error, log it if we're in debug mode, and then send status 400 and um, stringify the error and send it to the client side. So that's, you know, it's pretty simple, but uh, on the other hand, it can save you from a lot of those try catch uh, things when you don't explicitly need to catch a specific error like here, for example, you know, so that's a good thing. I actually want to save that and uh, I used it in a bunch of uh, places. So once again, um, it simplifies the code a lot so I can remove all this uh, try catch. I actually have to go through all the code and uh, clean it out because it, I think there's like a bunch of places where I did not clean it. Yeah, and some of them are fine. So basically I cleaned it and some of them it's still there, uh, user doesn't exist. Yeah, here's the place where I want to have actually explicit thing. Mm, I think we are good. Yeah, so there's basically like one or two places, which is not that bad. I thought I would do worse, but <laughs> I guess not. Um, we don't have a sync helpers here and we have a sync helper here, but there's no try caching. Perfect. So that's basically it. I guess this video is gonna be like super short, but um, once again, if you want details, if you wanna see how I coded this, there are live streams. Both of them, like several hours long, are on the YouTube channel. Links are again in the description. Go ahead and watch them. Um, for the next video, I am gonna, since this is sort of, the backend is now finished. So for the next video, I'm gonna wrap it in the Docker and we, I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'll show you how do you deploy with Docker. We will also set up the continuous integration that will basically run all those test suits uh, once we push the new stuff to the uh, GitHub repo. And we will also set up continuous delivery that will actually build the Docker container for us so that uh, people who just wanna use it and who are not developers can just, or I mean, I guess they are developers anyway, but they don't wanna contribute, they just wanna use the backend they will be able to do Docker pull uh, our backend and then Docker run and they will have it running without any additional 
sort of meddling with the balances, installing Node and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm hoping to record the next video sometime next week, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So I think it shouldn't take uh, too much time. I'm probably gonna be live streaming again, uh, creating all of this sort of deployment with Docker, CI, continuous delivery and so on. And uh, then again in the video, I'll just talk through quickly what I've done to sort of sum it up. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, that's about it. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, watching it all the way to uh, part five. I'm hoping you found something useful in those videos. I will keep developing them and I will keep publishing them until we are um, done with all the parts that I promised you in the beginning. So um, yeah, I guess uh, thank you for watching and you know, see you during the next video or next live stream. Uh, and yeah, subscribe to my Twitch channel if you wanna see live streams. I, I will try to announce them a bit earlier, but sometimes it can be like spontaneous because I don't really, you know, I'm not really completely sure about my schedule from time to time. So I just like, okay, I'm gonna stream now. And uh, that's what I usually do. So if you wanna know notifications, I will put the Twitch stream, uh, Twitch channel in my uh, description to this video so you can just subscribe and uh, get notifications once I'm live. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!